Hello everyone, welcome back to Porky's Collectibles. Today we have another great video for you. It's been a while since our last video, I believe it was in November, so definitely have a lot of things to catch up on. Caspian did have his first birthday and he had a nice Pokemon themed birthday. He's half Korean, so it's very important for them for their first birthdays. One of the our games or events during his first birthday is that he gets to choose one of the seven items the items representing different career paths in life and it was very fun watching him choose the item he chose as well as i had a different game for him where he got to choose his starter pokemon i remember when i first started playing pokemon red version when it first came out how i chose between squirtle charmander and bulbasaur of course i chose charmander but it was very fun watching him choose his starter you'd be kind of surprised which one he chose. I like the, the start he chose, so it was a lot of fun. For this video, I'm going to do just a quick what did I pick up since our last video. Cards that I've just picked up here and there from different platforms, from different areas that I think that I enjoy or are investable for the future. And a quick just how I feel about the Pokemon world and the collecting sense, investing, and what the future holds. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start jump right in. Now, let me go ahead and start showing some of the cards I've picked up. In terms of what cards I've picked up, I've picked up a lot of old arts recently just because I'm not really in terms of the hype but you know, some of these will not be alt arts. I, I picked up this Raichu EX because I really like this Raichu EX art. It's definitely one of my favorite. And then these Orbital VMAXs, I just really like the artwork. So that's not, it's a trainer gallery card, but it was so cheap and the artwork is so good that I had to pick up these cards as well. But in terms of collecting, I know it's been definitely, like we hit another low point in terms of being able to find product on shelves. And I definitely know that a lot of people are struggling to find product out there. In terms of was that last year where you can get so many different booster boxes, different choices from your fusion strikes, battle styles, chilling rain, evolving skies, brilliant stars, you know, you name it. There was, I don't have a lot of these cards already, but I had to pick some more up. There were so many things you can choose from. Going to your local uh, game store, you can pick up different packs and enjoy opening them up. And right now, they're just, it's just empty. But there are a lot of cheap cards out there that are just because people open so many packs that you can definitely go into your local card shop or eBay, wherever you want. And there's just so many cards that you can choose from. Now, I definitely say that we're kind of spoiled in this age because there's so many types of Pokemon cards and just so many prints from vintage to modern, alt arts, rainbow rares, trainer galleries, hyper rares, uh, you know, full arts, full art trainers. There's just so many choices and it can be a little bit daunting trying to collect all the cards, but just like everyone else, if, uh, and you know, that mentioned are true collectors, collect what you like. Uh, for me, I'm supposed to be collecting to finish my master sets, but it's just been so fun collecting these different artworks, especially these Umbreons. I picked up a whole bunch of these Celebes. Uh, I originally it was a lot cheaper, but it has gone up in price a little bit, but I definitely love the artwork and I still think they're undervalued. So I definitely picked up a lot of these Celebi V all arts. But in terms of that, um, the new sets are coming out, Scarlet and Violet. I definitely will we'll be enjoying that. I did pre-order those. I did, um, I'll show you in the background, but uh, those elite trainer boxes I picked up a whole bunch of them they're sold out you know you pick the items you think you're gonna enjoy opening and Crown Zenith is one of those sets that had so many good cards that when I pre-ordered I saw all of these were still in stock and no one was going for them but now they're like a hundred dollars a box but there's just so many good cards in there I just thought to myself it didn't matter like what it was the cards and a set really matters depending on what cards are in there and there's so many good cards in there then I feel like that's an investable set. For me, I know people are like, I picked up a lot of Evolving Skies and people are like, oh, you know, it's gonna be printed to the ground or whatever. But I gotta say the old arts are so hard to pull. I've yet to pull a VMAX alt art from Evolving Skies and I probably will never pull one. My, I'm just that bad at pulling cards. So that definitely was, you know, disappointing, but you know, the other people can pull it for me and I can definitely just buy them when they're cheap enough. And I love these promos for these Evolution alt arts. They're cheap. And um, can you imagine these were also involving skies? Uh, that's, that would be so hard to complete. But these are relatively cheap when I bought it and I just love the artwork. So I definitely picked up a lot of these. I probably picked up, what, three of each. And 
I think overall the market is, in terms of collecting, if you want to go buy singles, it's great. If you want to, you know, buy packs to open, try to try your luck, like, with my luck, it's, it's horrible. Um, it's definitely a lot harder to go ahead and buy packs. Especially nowadays where so many different things are being, you know, weighed out or, you know, doing weird stuff like that. Definitely, especially the Japanese cards, how they exploded in price. I don't, I mean, I understand the quality and the cards are really cool. The textures are really cool, but those full art trainers, those waifu cards, I know everyone's been talking about them. So many channels are mentioned about how crazy they are and everything and how they'll drop in price. Uh, I agree and don't and also disagree at the same time. A couple of things I wanted to mention was that yes, you can buy buy the same card in English and it's like what four hundred dollars versus twenty dollars or something like that. It's it's just crazy. But there are some Japanese cards that are just gonna be more expensive for a reason it's because some of them were not printed in English and they're Japanese exclusives. There are certain cards that were never printed in English and I can see why those ones are more expensive because you can only get them in Japanese and if they're secret rares. They're gonna be like one per box and there's so many of them, so definitely harder to get. So I get that, but at the same time, for me, I'm gonna hold off in Japanese. I was hoping the V-Star Universe would drop in price by the time Crown Zenith came out, but it hasn't really. I believe it's like $95. So, you know, it is what it is. We'll talk more about that in future videos, but I think this video, we're just gonna cut it short. Just wanted to put some more stuff on the screen while I talk. But hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully we'll have more time to put out some nice videos for you. Future videos, future opening videos for me where I pull nothing but also videos about me talking about how I feel as an actual collector that's collected over the years and I love these versus cards. I wish I picked up more of these when I was, when they were super cheap. 30, it was like $20 per half deck packs. I can't remember what it was, but crazy. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Bye.